Well, 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 what do we have here? It's quite a sunny afternoon and it's going to be a unicorn of an evening it seems as it's a Friday, it's new moon and the weather forecast is going to be clear from about 7 p.m. until 6 a.m. It's a good evening to get out, uh, new moon as well. So the first time in I don't know how long, I'm going to be shooting broadband imaging and I also have a new telescope to play with. So I'm going to go get that now. So what I have going on here is the new Stellar Mira 86 ED2 quad telescope. So this is a four lens quad telescope with two ED elements in it. And the benefit of a quad is that it comes flattened already within the whole optical tube assembly. There is not necessarily a need to put a dedicated reducer flattener on it. However, the Stellar Mira ED2, 86 ED2, <laughs> I'm so looking forward to using this scope. The Stellar Mirror 86 ED2 comes with a matched 0.8 times reducer, not reducer flattener, just reducer. And that is what I have currently set up on here as well. So I'm going to reduce it down just a touch. It's a 602 native. So it's been reduced down to about 482 millimeters now. Paired with the ZW585MC on the back there. Now I'm finding that this particular combination of uh, 480 odd millimeters, maybe 600 millimeters with the 585, actually is really versatile and good for this time of the year as we enter into galaxy season. It's not quite March yet, it's the 28th of February at the moment, but I'm going to begin galaxy season in earnest, nice and strong, by imaging a very famous pair of galaxies. And this pair is M81 and M82, of course, Bodes and Cigar Galaxy. Now, now you can you can make an argument that saying, oh, photographing a circumpolar pair of galaxies that are right up near the pole is not technically galaxy season. And you know what? That's fair. The counterpoint to that is I could go for M106, which I might try at some point. But for example, the Leo triplet, which is one I do want to image, at this point, it's going to be blocked by the house. So I'd have to wait for it to get higher and higher and that'll be later into galaxy season. So for now, I'm gonna focus on M81 and M82. The 585 does not come with a UV IR filter on it. It's just a clear glass window and I don't have a UV IR filter. So what I've instead put in there is an L-Pro filter. So that's an L-Pro light pollution filter and hopefully it's gonna help combat these lights because I have one, two, three street lamps right there which can shoot into the garden and one street lamp right there which also comes into the garden. Once that bush, that tree grows again, it'll help block that. But I really think the next time I try and find somewhere to live, I've got to find a better cell for you. So I've already checked the field of view using Stellarium. This could be a nice fit for both of these galaxies and it's gonna be interesting. I've not got the cooler on the back of the 585 this time. Simply put, I can't find another extension, USB extension at this current point to be able to power it. All I've got left to do is just put the dew heater back on. I do want to buy some new dew bands. These are getting a bit old now. So I might get some Lynx Astro ones at some point that could be powered by the ASI Air. But really, all that's left is to get the rest of the stuff out and uh, wait for it to get dark. Sunset is going to be around 6 p.m. I think. Clear from about seven. So plenty of time for the telescope to acclimate get used to the weather out here, get used to how cold it's going to be. And then I can start the polar alignment when it gets a bit darker. So I guess we'll touch base then. All right, it's around quarter past seven. Yeah, close enough now. And everything's ready to go. It's all dark, it's all set up. The telescope is, I was able to get the polar alignment sorted around six o'clock actually, while it was still twilight. And I can see the targets begin to appear. I can't tell if there's any clouds because I am blinding myself with that light. But calibration of guiding, sorted. Telescope, 
It's been out here for about two hours, acclimated. Everything is good to go. The last thing then is to get this slewed over and get going. Something I want to try is I've put my Canon 70D on the top. I've managed to mount it on a piggyback rail. I'm gonna see about getting that on some 300 millimeter, see what that looks like on M81, ME2 wide field. Um, if nothing else, I can see Orion right there, which would mean the Pleiades are right there. I might just turn it over to the Pleiades or something like that for the wide field. Because as this is tracking in RA, technically, if my logic is sound, that would be able to track those for longer exposures as well. But I don't know, never tried that before. It's gonna be fun. Um, yeah, let's get slewed over and get going. So M81, M82, really, really iconic targets. Uh, done the framing already. Focusing needs to run still. The autofocus will take care of that. I'm just double checking the um, the framing I've got with a three minute test sub. Guiding's going actually quite well. There was a blip at the left, but I was actually walking around the mount and I've been touching the camera on top. So that will settle out. But the important thing, is it's actually really, really level down there. Seems really good seeing tonight as well. So just getting this test sub in, I've already checked the image out of the camera on the top. That looks good. That was a two and a half minute <laughs> image at ISO 800, I believe. 300 millimeters F8, I stopped it down to to help the chromatic aberration in that camera lens. But with that riding piggyback, this will be doing uh, three minute long exposures so I'm gonna try and time it so it'll do two and a half minute with a delay, so it can let the cool sensor cool down, uh, you know, so it doesn't keep messing up the dithering. But it's gonna be interesting to see how that one works out. I might just keep it going and just be an anything that has um, trails in it. But let's have a look what this test frame is gonna look like. That's gonna download any moment now. Yeah, um, I'm happy with that. I mean, that's obviously the auto stretch. Looks like a satellite went through this frame but that's fine. So I think all that's left for me now is to set up this plan. I've already got one going, the auto run plan. It's gonna be 150 images at uh, three minutes. It says it's gonna take about seven and a half hours for now. But by the time you add in the auto focusing and the dithering, it's probably gonna be the better part of maybe eight, eight and a half hours. I, can, I could do this all night if I wanted to, and I might do. Or I might slow over to another target, it depends. I'm gonna see what happens. For now, all I've got to do is run the auto run, uh, auto focus routine, get the camera on the top going, and then, yeah, we're ready to go. So hopefully this is a nice image. First time using a quad. I'm so excited about this, and it's gonna be interesting to see how this camera, this L Pro tackles these sodium lights around me. I can see Venus, Jupiter. It's very nice out tonight, so I think it's gonna be I think it's going to be a good night imaging and I can't wait. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy the image at the end. I'm going to share both images off both cameras no matter what because, you know, some days we win, some days we lose. I don't know what's the result going to be, but I'm going to share all the pictures anyway. Thanks very much for coming along with me. I hope you have clear skies as well. Keep looking up, keep the camera clicking. See you next time. <laughs>